Okay, we're going to take a look at uh, graphing a logarith uh, logarithmic function. And so our example here is going to be a look at the graph of y equals to log base 3 of x. If we go back to the definition, uh, what we know is that we're really defining a logarithm to be kind of the reversal uh, of a, an exponential function. So exponential growth, we know grows very fast, and exponential decay decays very quickly uh, <clears throat> down to zero. But logarithmic growth is going to be a type of function that's going to kind of grow relatively fast quick but then grow very very slowly but it continues to grow without bounds so a, a log function is going to grow if it's logarithmic growth is going to get larger than any number that you want it's going to uh, increase off to infinity so we say it grows without bound and when we look at logarithmic decay same thing's going to happen it, it's going to decay very quick uh, well relatively quickly um, on a small span of time but then the decay goes very, very, very slow. So it's much different than exponential growth and exponential decay where that happens um, extremely fast. The growing period is happening really fast. Uh, and so it's getting large quickly, but logarithmic growth is gonna get large very slowly. So our definition of a kind of log equation here, or if you want a log function, is that y equals to log base a of x. This log is just kind of a made up invented word for uh, what we're actually looking at as an exponential equation, but the y and x's are reversed. And so we call these uh, inverse functions when we're swapping the x and y's. So I have this exponential equation where now the output is assigned to the x put and my input looks like where it's the y place. So when we look at a log expression, the way we translate it, it says y equals to log base a of x. This log is actually an exponent. y is an exponent, so here, that we put on a in order to get x as my answer. So if we think about uh, a statement like, so take like a statement like y is log base 5 of 25. What does this mean? So the, I'm saying I get a log function with base 5 and the input is 25. Well what this tells me is that when I look at this exponential form of it, I read this as what exponent do I put on 5 to get 25 as an answer? And if you, you know, take a second to think about it, well what exponent do I put in 5 to get 25 as an answer? I know that should be 2. So 2 equals to log base 5 of 25. So we can argue it that way, or we can come down and say, well, let's rewrite this in an exponential form. So the base of the logarithm is a, so I have 5 to the y equals to 25, and then I solve for what y has to be. In this case, we, we say this is like a type 1 exponential equation, where if I can write the other side with the same base, I can just set the exponents equal to each other to solve. There's a lot of algebra going on in there, but that gives me the general strategy of how I can use that. So that's that's what we're dealing with logarithms, is we're dealing with this kind of reversal of an exponential type function. And the reversal is that I'm swapping those x and y coordinates. And just to make it convenient so that it looks like our other functions, I'm rewriting it as y is log base a of x. Um, so we're going to look at y equals log base 3 of x. And because it's this kind of reversal, we have to reverse our process that we use for a, a kind of standard t-table for graphing a function. So in our standard t-tables, when we graph a function, um, if I know a little bit about it, I pick x values that are appropriate. Uh, I don't know much about it right this second until I start thinking about it. So I'm just going to pick x values like 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I'm going to see I can't really get very far with this. Um, I might be able to get an answer for 1, but when I do 2, so I'm going to look right here at 2, what, what's going to happen? I say, okay, y equals the log base 3 of 2. Well, I know that's equivalent to this statement, so that's going to be equivalent to saying um, 3 to the y equals to 2. And in order to figure out what y is, I need to know what is the exponent I put in 3 to get 2 as my answer. 
Well, we know 3 to the first is 3. 3 to the 0 is 1. So I'm thinking that our y value has to be between 0 and 1, but I really can't guess what that exponent is going to be so that when I put it on 3, I get 2 as an answer. Now, because we've run across this all over the place, not really right in the beginning, but all over down below, making this kind of table is not that appropriate anymore for doing these log functions. So when we're dealing with logs, we're going to do something a little backwards. We're going to do our x, y, t table, but I'm going to start with y values and try to figure out the corresponding x. So I'm going to make a, a, a big x here. Whoops. Let me undo that. Get a pen. Now I get a pen. Big x here and say, well, we're not going to use this approach for graphing this y equals log base 3 of x. So when I construct my t-table for log graphs, I'm going to do uh, the x and y, but I'm going to list down values of y and try to figure out the corresponding x for each of those. And the y's for a logarithm, they can be any number from negative infinity to infinity. I'm going to start with 0 right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm going to put negative 1 right here. But when I start with this work here, I'm going to start with 0 and just kind of see what happens here as we get more negative values. And let me kind of... Uh, increase the, the, the length here. Let me go a couple of negatives so we can get what the general pattern is going to be. Okay. So I'm looking to say, okay, if y is 0, what does x have to be? So if 0 equals to log base 3 of x, then the following must also be true. I take 3 to the 0, I must get x as my answer. Well, we know 3 raised to the 0 power is 1, and so when y is 0, x equals to 1. So that tells me the coordinate 1, 0 is on my graph. Well, let's do the same thing now for these other y values. If I say um, y is equal to 1, so that means 1 equals to log base 3 of x, that's equivalent to saying 3 to the first equals to x, tell me what x is. Well, 3 to the first is 3, so I know when y is 1, x is equal to 3, and that tells me another coordinate, 3 comma 1, is on the graph. And I'm going to continue this for um, these other values. So when uh, y equals to 2, 2 equals to log base 3 of x, this tells me 3 squared is equal to x, so x is equal to 9 now. Well, that's curious. In order to get a change in y from 1 to go 1 unit higher, what's happening with my x values? So I just want to go 1 unit higher from 0 to 1. Uh, I have to go 3 times as far from the origin. But to go one more unit change in y values, to go up just one more unit in the height, I have to go an additional six units here. It's three times as far from the origin as this one was. Well, is that going to be true for three? And you should check this. X is going to have to be 27, and when you know when y is four, x is going to have to be 81. So what we notice is that there's exponential growth in the x values to get me one more unit increase in the y value. So this is growing really fast because I'm going to have to get very large just to get one more unit in height for the given y value. That's what logarithmic growth is, is that we have to go exponentially far in x just to get one more value in the y direction. Well, what about if, if we go with the negative values? What's happening here? When y is negative 1, what does uh, my x have to be? Okay, well, if we do the same thing here, if negative 1 equals to log base 3 of x, what is x? Well, this is equivalent to 3 raised to the negative 1 power equals to x. And 3 to the negative 1, well, we know the negative in the exponent says take the reciprocal of that base. So x has to be 1 third. All right, what about when y is negative 2? 
if negative 2 equals to log base 3 of x, then the equivalent definition tells me that 3 to the negative 2 equals to x, or what's 3 to the negative 2? 1 over 3 squared, which is 9. So x has to be 1 ninth. So in order to decrease a y value, I going um, like, you know, two-thirds distance here, but then to degree, decrease one more y value, I don't have to go as far. And that's going to be true as I give more and more y values being negative. So I think of extending this table here. The x values are going to get closer to zero, but they're going to grow very slowly in, in a sense that we have this exponential type decay in the inputs to get one more value in the y. So I don't have to move very far in x's eventually to get one more unit decrease in y. It doesn't have to move very quickly, but the y's get very large negative. So let's take a look at the graph just to see what um, y equals to log base 3 of x is um, by plotting these points and looking at, at our behavior. So I have my x and y axis here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's about all we're going to be able to fit on there. And negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 6, 7. Not going to go very far. 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's start plotting our points. We know when x is 1, the output is 0. And that's kind of interesting. When x is 1, the output is 0, does it really matter what a is? Is that always going to be true? a to the 0 is always going to equal to 1. So that means any log graph, that's going to be a point on the graph, but everything else is going to be a little different. When um, x is 3, so 1, 2, 3, the output is 1. When x is 9, the output is 2. When x is 1 third, the output was negative 1. But I don't have to be as far as away to get to negative 2. And again, about 1 ninth would be a little bit more here. Let's get rid of this one. So if we look at 1 ninth, and then if we look at the next kind of part of the pattern, 1 27th would be negative 3, and then 1 81st would be negative 4, and then whatever 3 to the 5th is, I believe 243, would be down here at negative 5. We see we've got this kind of um, what we call is asymptotic behavior. As x approaches 0 here, we're going to go down and get more and more negative, but you're going to be very, 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 very close to this y-axis to see that. So when I think of the graph, it looks like it's that y-axis, and then it approaches here and hits the point 1, 0. So we got the point here, 1, 0, and this point here, 3, 1. But the growth is really slowing down. So this one unit change in y that's six units long, while this one unit change was only two units long. This one unit change was, you know, two-thirds units long. This one unit change was even smaller. So our growth for logarithmic growth is that in order to get one unit higher, I'm going to have to go very far out in that x-axis. And so although it looks like it's, it's not growing fast, it, it won't get very large, this will grow off to a positive infinity. Give me a number on the y-axis, eventually we can find somewhere on the x-axis where the function output gets larger than it. It's just that that function input for that growth, for that number, is going to have to be extremely large just to get us above that value. So to get above, say, uh, 4 on the output, we have to start inputting values above 81. So to get above 5, we're going to see that the outputs are would have to be above 243. That's the idea of logarithmic growth, is that it's really slow.